You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you for joining us. This is episode 1029. Really excited to be back in this chair, hanging out with Paul, talking to you. Thank you for listening. Yes, thank you very much for listening. Don't forget, if you have a question, whether it's about starting your drone business, whether it's about marketing, whether it's about videography, photography, special intelligent flight features on your drone, or maybe it's about mapping, don't be afraid to send your question in. Just go to askdroneu.com and send that question in. Chances are, if you're thinking of that question, someone else is as well. So make sure you check it out. But anyway, in uh, today's show, we've got a question regarding how to fly in areas that show up as a zero in the UASFM map, or also famously known as the just Google FAA visualize it, and you will find the UASFM map. Um, As we know, the FAA is very good with acronyms and names, so (laughs) it actually does make it really easy to search. So uh, in all honesty, whenever I'm like, oh, I need the UASFM map, if you search that term... A bunch of crap comes up. But if you search FAA Visualize It, no one else has come up with a page like that. So it's one of those things. It's very easy to tell. Um, But before we get into today's question, uh, just really quick, if you heard the news, Drone Use flagship in-person course that we're talking about Flight Mastery. Flight Mastery is a sequence of 12 exercises that build up one on top of the other over the period of a whole day, where pilots are then tested through an obstacle course. Well, if you pass that obstacle course, now you're granted an educational rate on your insurance through Skywatch. So make sure you book a Flight Mastery class today, as it's one of the only drone trainings that actually pays itself back. Now, with that said, also, we are uh, conducting a drone mapping class, drone mapping boot camp, excuse me, in Denver, Colorado, September 13th through 15th. And then we are at the NTSB Training Academy for a flight mastery class and a drone mapping boot camp. This is by far a most systematic class. Every single person gets instruction guides on every single exercise. It's kind of like a mini fly-in. And this is by far my favorite class. This class always gets me excited. It's not not just for investigators. It's for anyone who's genuinely interested in becoming one of the best drone mappers out there. Uh, In addition to drone mapping, this class will also cover the standard operating procedures for search and rescue. That's right. How do you use drones for search and rescue? Well, we're going to go over an exercise on how to showcase a systematic means of covering wide areas and utilizing a program to look through those photos to find, well, missing aircraft parts crash parts, and people. So this is going to be a training you do not want to miss. As we cover the standard drone mapping boot camp, but we add a full day for exercises and search and rescue training as well. You definitely will not want to miss this class if you're in public safety or if you're in advanced photogrammetry. Yes, you heard that right. Advanced photogrammetry. In addition, you're going to get to see a really cool demonstration for BVLOS. So if you're in utility inspections, this class is already great for you. But now it's even better as well because you can, well, hear from the horse's mouth on how to get a BVLOS waiver to do things like power line inspections. So, Rob, this is one of those classes, while it is hyper-focused as far as marketing is concerned, it covers a wide gamut of content. And we talked about that with Bill English on the show. Really excited. Don't want to promote anymore. We've been promoting a lot in the beginning of the show. Let's get right into today's question. So if you'll play it for me, please. Hey, guys. This is Chris from North Carolina. My question is about getting approval for zero airspace in the Lance Grid. Could you go over the steps necessary with both the FAA and DJI to first get authorization, and secondly, to remove the geofence on DJI drones? Also, to the listeners, I wanted to throw a bone to your mapping class. I attended the Charleston class earlier this year. It was great and helped me take my mapping to a new level and completely prepared me for the PIX4D exam to be a certified user. Well worth the time and money. You guys are great. Thanks for taking my question. 
Wow. Well, thank you very much. I mean, well worth yeah. the time and money. I, I really appreciate that. Um, that was one of my favorite drone mapping classes. You know why? Because we did a we did a mapping excursion where we tried to do historical preservation of this old lighthouse. So we added like three or four hours to that Saturday. We went out and we looked like literally a, a huge gang of like um, investigators. I don't know what we looked at, but we were all like, you know, in dark colors, driving dark SUVs. And there was like 15 <laughs> of us carrying black cases. Like, you know, people That's were funny. People were really like, are you guys here to get someone? <laughs> like we, people asked us that question multiple times. We're like, no. Around, like, <laughs> <"Is it me?" laughs> so I guess maybe the key secret to uh, not being disturbed when flying drones at the beach is bring 10 other large gentlemen <laughs> with you. <laughs> with black SUVs yeah. and black cases. Oh. Yeah, no, that is definitely something we try to do with the mapping classes is make them interesting. We work really hard to find locations that you'll have a fun day mapping. And so uh, I think... Um, Denver is no exception, which, by the way, I get to go to Denver. I'm pretty excited about that. Look forward to meeting you guys. Yeah, you're actually coming to a couple trainings. You're coming to Denver, and you're coming to the Kauai training, which we'll be, oh, we yeah. will be announcing as soon as we can get the ClickFunnels pages built. Oh. <laughs> Why but, did you just look at me about it? I'm no, just, no, I'm no. Kidding, it's I'm nothing, kidding. nothing to do with you. I'm kidding. Um, Actually, it is, but that's all right. For a lot of you who are not familiar with what's going on here at DroneU, uh, we are actually expanding headquarters. We now have a full-blown training center, huge classroom with the largest TV I've ever seen, <laughs> and we uh, intend to announce one of the greatest features of this new uh, drone training center, which does not exist anywhere else in the world. So we're really excited about that, but it has thrown a wrench in our ability to get uh, some things done as some employees are moving into the office, others are taking things out, there's just stuff moving all over, and construction, as Rob accurately predicted before it all started, took forever. <laughs> Technical term. Yeah, yes. <laughs> took forever. Yes. But I mean, you, you did call it out. Um, but anyway, let's not talk about any more about us. Let's talk about how we can help him out. So his question is, how do I unlock um, a zero grid zone uh, in a particular controlled airspace? This is a great question because we've had people um, actually write in, uh, and Tom Powers, one of, the, one of the great secret assets here at DroneU, really appreciate what you do for us, my friend. Um, but uh, there's a lot of people that work on aggregating data for drone use so that we can help make better community-based decisions. And I think that's one of the, some of the power of the podcast. But that said, we had one particular user who actually tested this exact philosophy. Um, he was at our Dallas mapping class, and I got to go over the data with him, uh, Rob, and it was, it was phenomenal. He had applied through, U, uh, through zero grid zones, I believe in UA Sidekick, in Kitty Hawk, and the drone zone. And I think one more Lance application, maybe it was Skyward. I can't remember exactly, but I want to say it was those, those, those kind of key ones. And he had actually found that it was much more successful than use, like, for example, he found it was so much more successful using the FAA drone zone to ask for those zero grid areas than utilizing any application. He even mentioned that some applications took three, four, five times as long as other applications. And my goal is not to berate those people or be to, uh, pedantic, so I'm not going to mention what those apps were. But that said, it was very interesting to me, Rob, that he found the fastest way to unlock a particular zero grid area was through the FAA drone zone, which you would expect, you know, the source to be the slowest. You know, we're so huh. used to convenience. We're so used to applications and getting that instantaneous approval. But you have to understand the systems to build an instantaneous system do not allow for the flexibility and variables to allow very responsible pilots to fly in very controlled areas. So I find it very interesting, number one, uh, that they're finding the FAA drone zone the most valuable, but I think that's also great. That's good news. We don't need to pay people to like do this stuff for us. Everyone needs to remember it's free. Now, that being said, I am a very proud supporter of UA Sidekick. I do pay the $5 a month for Lance uh, service because I love it. Everyone who listens to this show knows that I care very deeply about the industry and about our rights to fly. Um, and I believe that UA Sidekick is really providing resources for people um, in the search and rescue realm, in the public safety realm. Um, they're adding a suite of assets to their application that are not available anywhere else that really may get the best for Lance, in my opinion. So I know I'd, you know, I'd been gung-ho on Kitty Hawk for a very long time, 
Uh, but I'm, I'm really excited about UA Sidekick. In fact, we're going to have Nathan Ruff, who's the head of that, on the show soon. And in fact, they're actually helping work on UTM as well, the Universal Traffic Management hmm. System. So very excited about that. Now, really quick. Uh, so he was like, hey, I need help unlocking a zero grid uh, in, a, in an area. First of all, it's really important to increase the chances of applying for that zero grid. What is the radius that you are going to fly in an area? Because I found if you can keep it within a quarter mile of a particular center point, that you're probably going to get accepted much, much, much faster. In addition, if you can keep your ceiling, your flight level as low as possible, the chances of you being approved are are very, very good. Um, in addition, your specificity: how are you going to, you know, maintain situational awareness? How how are you going to seek and avoid? What are you going to do to ensure that if an aircraft comes in your airspace, you can very quickly yield to that aircraft? I would recommend if you're flying in a zero grid, I would probably require a VO. And I'm sure the FAA is probably going to ask you if you have a VO. And again, while you may not necessarily need a VO if you're a very good pilot, I think that the FAA is going to look... Uh, positively on you having a VO. Now, if you guys remember, this is only one side of the equation as Rob is uh, quickly learning in his um, navigation of going through the 107 training material. But with that said, there's always the red zone, right? If you're flying in DJI, you may have the old geo system if you never updated um, the uh, airspace authorization system or geo geo zone system or you could have geo zone 2.0 which is the bow tie system which does allow for more aircraft flights along the sides of airports but really knocks out a lot of larger areas along the approach path and um, takeoff path f of runways. So depending on which geo zone that you're operating in is going to be dependent on how the unlocking works as well. Now, really quick, there's a video from DroneU, from us, um, October 26, 2018. How do I unlock a red zone on my DJI drone? It's not the best produced video from us by any means. In fact, Sarah and I had gone to a wedding in Denver that weekend, and Vic came down to the hotel and said, can we knock out this video really fast? And we put it all together really Son, fast. So It's better to have the info out there. If than nothing. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you 100%. But in that video, we showcase specifically exactly how to unlock a red zone in your DJI drone. We also go through the process of how to upload that to uh, your particular drone. Because when you do get the unlock, your drone can only fly inside of that unlock digital fence, let's say. So if you like forget to take off the unlock, you won't be able to fly anywhere else in the world other than that very small area. So we go over the very systematic means of, okay, you got your approval, well, that's where we start. Uh, here is how to go through the DJI system. Go online, it's, uh, I forget exactly the web address. Um, but that's why it's so important to link our video. In fact, I'm just going to pull this up right now so I can share it with the media team so we can make sure it gets in this show. But it's just really crucial. You gotta get the airspace authorization first from the FAA, provide that documentation um, to DJI and a picture, I believe, of your driver's license and a picture of your uh, certificate if you want it to go through instantly. I've been hearing a lot of stories, Rob, of people getting uh, airspace authorization within minutes, like on a Saturday. Um, wow. Uh, that, is a, that is a far cry from what we were hearing even just last year. That's great news. So again... Progress. Um, again, I would say, you know, if uh, anyone at DJI is listening to this show, I think it would be so cool if you could qualify commercial drone pilots in the qualified entity program so that we can have just a master unlock. So I think, uh, I think that would help a lot of people. But Rob, when it comes to uh, getting authorization in a zero grid, go through the FAA drone zone, uh, you know, ensure that you have a VO, be very specific in the operation. What are you going to do? What's the radius of the operation? How high are you going to fly? Remember, the lower those numbers, the higher propensity you have for mm -hmm. getting approved. Just know there are some airports that are just going to flat out say no. Uh, we know that Kappa Airport uh, in Colorado is one of those airports. And there's airports like that. And because 
in some of these areas, they're saying, well, if we give one drone pilot the ability to fly there, then we have to give every drone pilot the ability to fly there. And I would say, I would like to agree with you, but then we would both be wrong. Um, because <laughs> first, well, of, first of all, that's not true. Second of all, pub- public airspace is exactly that. It's a public thoroughfare, Rob. Mm-hmm. We are supposed to have access to particular areas of that airspace. And I think these type of tower operators that have this uh, mentality of, if I help you, I have to help everyone. It really, really grinds my gears because it means those people still think that drones are inherently dangerous and there's over 8 million drones in the airspace all the time and yet we have still only had one accident and that was with some hobbyist drone pilot in New York City who hit a uh, that Black Hawk helicopter. Yeah. One time. 8 million drones. Anyway. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, you didn't interrupt me. I'm, I'm just looking here on, on some of the zero grid areas and uh, yeah. I, do you know what percentage of them are actually approved? Have we heard it's that? It's low. I Pretty don't low. know the numbers, but in fact, we have a FOIA request in to find out that information and some other Lance information. So Interesting. Yeah, because yeah, there's obviously a lot of uh, important areas that people might need to fly that are in zero grid, obviously. Uh, yeah, for sure. But we hope that helps. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the link to how to unlock a red zone is below. I hope we provided enough information to help you unlock a, um, a zero grid. Guys, just to be real, there are tasks power operators who are not going to let you fly, um, which is really unfortunate to say the least. Um, sometimes you have to take things to the national level um, to be able to to get what you want. Um, but, you know, I will say that there is, you know, business is built on relationships. Go make friends with people. Explain to them what you're doing. You know, there, there are ways to get around this. So There's some really weird stuff in here. Like you'll have 400 and surrounding a zero. So I wonder if, you know... Yeah, that's really weird. If that's you in need Colorado. to fly in there, then that's part of your request is, is that really intended to be a zero? You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I guess my point is, look at the map closely and kind of work with the logic of what you're looking at as well, because it doesn't always make sense. True. You know, this brings up a really interesting point, Rob, is that if you have a client who's in a zero grid... Should you charge them more for the time that it takes to get all the necessary paperwork to fly? Yes. But what happens if those clients would, could they understand they can hire um, a drone pilot who may not follow the rules and get exactly what they want? Oh gosh, we have talked about that ad nauseum and that shouldn't change from my perspective, your approach, your professionalism, etc. Nor should it change your value, right? And your time is valuable. So that's just something that we all deal with in all industries. And I, I wouldn't let it affect your approach, right? Yeah, and your I think, philosophy. I think, you know, we, we always say so many times, at least you guys say to me, it's all about how you say things. Yeah. Um, and I think that that is uh, just so critical, so critical. It is. Um, because how we go about things often dictates whether people are willing to help us or not. So For with sure. that said, if you have a client who's in a zero grid zone and you're going to charge them a couple extra hundred bucks for all the paperwork, um, if they ask, just say, look, you know, you're in a very uh, difficult area to fly. It takes a significant amount of time to get the legal authority to fly. I understand that you can probably go the illegal route uh, to garnish the photos or media or whatever that you're after. But unfortunately, I will not take on that risk or that liability because flying a drone in controlled airspace without an authorization is actually an offense that the FAA has have has had a history of enforcing against. In fact, um, not the most recent FOIA, but the second to last FOIA that we did that had the 50 enforcements on it since uh, 2016. Mm-hmm. A lot of them were in controlled airspace. So, For sure. Not to mention it's unsafe, right? Yes. And, and the theoretical level of the, uh, the lack of safety isn't even that important. Not to mention that most airports have aeroscope and can watch what you're doing. That too. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.